Hello everyone and welcome to this final episode of our Quest System series. In this episode we're going to go through several little bugs and little fixes that we want to do to our system before we say it's finished. So let's go in and fix these three things. So the first thing we're going to fix is our tracker. Now at the moment our tracker does not update in real time. What I mean by that is if I were to accept this quest and then add it to my tracker, there it is. And if I was to say interact with this object, there you go, it's completely objective, but it hasn't updated it on the tracker. It also won't update if I collect these either. And if I go into my log, we can see that these have been updated. It's just not referring back to here. So what we need to do is we need to tell our quest to basically tell, uh, shout out when it's updated its objectives. So let's go to our quest base here. And it will go to the on objective ID heard. So basically, this is a function that gets called whenever it hears any objective ID being heard. And at the end, where we've got is objective complete and it's added to the uh, existing map here, we're going to add a little space here and we go down to event dispatcher. And on the event dispatcher, we're going to do on objective heard. And oh, let me just fix that spelling. And uh, we're going to compile that. And all we're going to do is drag that out and call that at the end here. Now our tracker is uh, tracking a particular quest object, this one. So if I go to the tracker here, we have the quest actor. And when it gets called to update this here, we want to get the quest actor and bind it. So I'm going to take this. And actually what we'll do is if I... If I take this quest actor here and convert the validated gear, I'll move these pins to that instead. That way it'll work for both construct and update. So if it is valid over here, um, we want to um, bind it. So we're going to do bind event to objective herd. Do that and then plug that in. And the thing it's going to call here is the update there. But I have to down here, I have to do custom event on objective heard. And I want to tell this to update. So I just call the update function. And the quest object is still the same. It hasn't changed at all. We're not changing it out. We just tell it to update the existing one. So when I compile and save that, it'll go back through the update when I pick up these things. So let's test that out. I'll go pick up my quests, track it, and there it is. And I'll go interact with this. It'll do that. Now, we've got an issue here where it's adding duplicates. It is updating it, but it will add duplicates each time. So we just need to clear it. Um, so let's go back into there and go to the tracker. And on the update, we're going to take the objective box here and we're going to clear its children. And that's how you clear out a panel in your widget. So let's take a look at that now. Pick up the quests, track it. Yep, and let's see it's changed it on the thing there too, on the tracker. And that's changing it here. Now I've got all the orbs. I can now go pick up the rewards. Excellent. Okay. So the next thing we're going to fix is this. When I click on uh, him again, I'm going to get the same quest back. Now, I've already done that quest. I don't want to get it again. So what we need to do is make it so it checks our completed quests dialog. So let's go into the NPCs here, quest giver component, and check that out. Okay. And in here, we are... Doing that, there you go. So query active quests, and it's not an active quest, it's fine. Which is true, it's not an active quest, but it's also a, a not a valid quest because it's been completed. So we're going to do query active quest, but we also want to do on the quest log component query completed quests. So let's go to our quest log component. And we've got query active, let's go to query completed. So I'm just going to go to here and duplicate this. And we do query completed quests. 
and oh, it's exactly the same except for the array we're looking at. We're not looking at that one. We're looking at the completed quest array. Okay, now let's go back to our quest giver component. And where we're doing query active quest, we also want to do here query completed quest and check that against the same quest ID. This will also be a not. And these both have to be true in order for it to be able to give you the quest again. So do and boolean. So both to be true in order for it to resolve being true. So now if I go in and complete that quest again, accept, let's track it, might as well. That's one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Collect the rewards, and if I interact with them again, we are now got it concept completed. Uh, but we are now seeing the completed screen instead each time. So how do we stop that happening? Well, if we go back to our quest giver component and go back to interact with, this force is going to trigger off down here. And you're going to get the quest actor and check whether or not it's been completed or not. If it has been completed, we're going to display rewards. Now, the issue is, is that the quest actor we want to basically not exist when it is completed. So this should not return anything. So if we go to get quest actor, and we've got quest ID, uh, current quests, we'll check through this. And, and that's so that's returning something. So the issue is not here, but instead on when we actually complete the quest and turn it in. So let's go to turn in quest. And we're going to do this. Uh, get quest actor, XP rewards, print that out, complete quest, add it to complete quest, uh, count quests here, get quest actor. So the issue is on complete quest, we've got the adding it to our completed quest array, we've got it removing from our current active quest, but we've still got it existing in our current quest, like the actor that this is referring to still exists, um, which is an issue because if we were to tell it to destroy here, it's still being used on this quest completed. It's still being read from that. So what we need to do is basically tell it to not just be completed, but also turned in. So let's go back to our quest base actor here. And we're going to add another Boolean on it called is turned in. There we are. And when I go to complete the quest on the quest log component here, I'm going to take this array element here and we do set is turned in. Oh, no, sorry, not that one. Apologies. Uh, it'd be on turning quest. Where is it? Turning quest. Do, 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 do. Turning quest. Yeah, so on uh, this. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, be the right place. Sorry, that's the right place. We want to do uh, is turned in. Set that to be true. I'm going to put it before the call, just so all the information is correct at the time of the call is turned in. Um, so what I'm going to also do is I'm going to add a little edit to... Uh, I'll probably didn't compile it. Whoops. And go back. There you go. Um, so, yeah, probably haven't... Uh, what I want to do is I want it to return whether or not the quest is complete. So if I go back to the quest base object... We've got is objective complete, and we've got um, is objective complete. Sorry, uh, is query completed quests. Yeah, so query completed quests and go through the completed quests uh, ar array, uh, but we're also going to return whether or not it's been turned in. So we're going to go in here, add another turned in return value, which will be a boolean. And I now need to check whether or not the quest that this is referring to has been turned in or not. So I'm going to do get quest actor and plug in the quest ID. If this is valid, because it may not be valid, depending on when we are interacting with it. Because if we're starting with a new save, the quest wouldn't be a thing, any a problem. So it's not an issue whatsoever. So putting it as valid. If it's not valid, that's fine. We'll just do that in there. Completed and we'll say it is turned in. Okay. Um, that's the assumption it's made. If you complete the quest but you don't have it on you, it's been turned in already. But if it is valid, we then want to check whether or not it has been turned in. So we're going to put in a return node here and we'll put in 
the same thing here but the turned in is going to come from the array element here so we're going to drag out and get is turned in and plug that in so back on the quest giver component we now need to tell it to check whether or not not that it's just been completed to show its rewards but whether or not it's been turned in okay so is completed and is turned in get turned in is not true so do not boolean and these both have to be true for this to work so and boolean there and put that into there okay so that should do it so if we go back now to our game test this out get the quests accept got this we got six objects go. and go talk to him collect the rewards yeah you got the rewards click on him again nothing and no errors there you go and the last bug we're going to fix is at the very start of the quest and that is when we pick this up we see the objective names are missing from our quest display here you should be able to figure out how to do this yourself but we're going to do it anyway so let's go into our ui and go to the quest giver ui okay so in here we're going to go to the graph and on here we are adding the for each loop here for each objective now the reason why it's not showing up is because on this objective entry here this will only change its uh, contents if the quest actor is active now the quest actor isn't active yet we haven't accepted the quest so that's kind of useless in this case so what we want to do is on is not valid just change these values to their default value so look, it's not tracking the current progress or anything like that so it doesn't matter so let's take these i'm going to copy them put them down here and connect them up to is not valid and if it's not valid we're doing almost the same thing over here we're doing the format text with the quest objective id information here and paste that in and plug that in there and the current value is going to be zero always zero so we just take that out and put in zero yeah that's all we've got to do there and the check if it's complete is always going to be unchecked so simple as that save there and let's go into our game take a look at our character and there we go yeah got some wrapping issues here that's no problem we can easily fix that go into here and we're going to click on the text and we're going to make the text wrap so we do auto wrap where is that auto wrap and that'll tell the text to go to a new line when it reaches the end here or not why is it not doing that uh, um yeah why is it not doing that let's take a look at this uh box objectives uh yeah we're adding each objective to that so that should wrap around we could clip it but it means you cut off the edge rather than going to the next line but it should go to the next line um if not we'll give it a fixed size because this thing has got has got a fixed size so you can do that um it's got a size of 408 roughly so if i change from auto wrap to wrap text at let's say 350 just to be safe and then push play there you go go to a new line there okay uh, but there you go um the images here would refer to the ob items that are rewards so that works basically on whatever I item system that you're using and if you are then that's great it's pretty simple to do you should be able to figure that one out just by adding the icons for your inventory system that you're using for that inventory system based upon the re item rewards that you get from uh, the objective okay um but yeah uh there you go and there you go we've now completed our quest system and as you saw we can easily add items to this too if we have an inventory system so just use your inventory slots as you would normally for your other inventory systems and assign them into there and hopefully you can figure that out and put that into there that's the sort of challenge off to you but if you do struggle with that do let me know in the question in the comments below and if there are a lot of people getting st stuck on that bit we'll consider making another part where we go through with that stuff too but i do want to go into making a whole inventory system for the sake of doing it when we've really got that series 
already going on there too. So I want to say massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. If you're a Patreon Gold member, you can access the project files for the Quest system right now over on Patreon as well. Thank you so much for your watching and subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.